For a lot of companies, their primary source of data comes from an in-house application. And as data teams, we're usually working with some sort of internal database. But when it comes to analytics, that doesn't always mean you should be using that same database to store your data warehouse, to create those analytics tables. And this is a scenario that has come up a handful of times with potential clients of mine. So what we'll do in this video is talk about the differences between an application database and an analytics database and some of the trade-offs between them and why you might want to consider using one versus the other for your analytics purpose. Now, to get started, before we even start talking about which approach you should or shouldn't take for analytics, let's first define what we're talking about here when we say application database, when we say analytics database. From my perspective, when I think of an application database, I'm thinking of a traditional transactional row-based database. So PostgreSQL, MySQL, they are those OL TP databases. They're great for quick reads, quick writes, small transactions, updating records, and they are purposely designed to be the back end to power an application of some sort. Maybe it's a web based application. Maybe it's a desktop application. But a lot of times you're doing individual things like trying to get the information about a user or quick information about a customer, something like that to display on the application. In addition, there's probably a lot of information that's submitted through forms and different windows, things like that to log that information in the database from a database schema perspective, there's many different tables for very specific things. So you're going to have, let's say an orders table, and then also an order type table, maybe a product table, and then a product type table. So generally speaking, these databases that are built for this are intended for a high volume of small, quick transactions for inserting, deleting, updating individual records and more on a row based level. Now let's talk about the analytics version of this. And when I say this, I'm talking in my mind more about these cloud based column based databases. And when I say column based, what I'm talking about here is the design of how the data is stored. So before we mentioned it's row based. So that means the data is stored and read in individual rows. So anytime it needs to get some information, it's reading every individual row. And this is really helpful when you need to just get quick information and you're not doing a lot at once. Analytics databases, on the other hand, the columnar based is able to read a really large volume of data by just looking at specific columns. It can compress it, figure out what the unique values are and parse through it really quickly for aggregation purposes, but it's not really well suited for individual quick, small transactions to many different tables with a lot of different joins like that. It's just a completely different approach in purpose. And that's the point of this video to explain that there are differences. Now you technically could use them for the other purpose. It's not illegal. It's not going to not let you do that. You could set up an application database using Snowflake or using BigQuery if you really wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend it for those reasons. It's not designed with that in mind and vice versa. You can use MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server for analytics purposes. And, and a lot of companies do. And depending on the size of your data, that second example of using, let's say, Postgres or SQL Server for analytics is absolutely doable. So to summarize this one, these databases are really good at storing, reading, and aggregating over really large amounts of data rather than individual one-off transactional type of things. The analytics database is truly one of the most important components of any data architecture. So if you're somebody who is either looking to design your own data architecture or you're an engineer looking to build your career and you want to better understand not only the database itself, but the different components around a complete data architecture, then I have a resource that I think would be really helpful for you that I'd like to share. It's called the Modern Data Checklist. It's going to break down four of the key data architecture components that I've come across in my career, along with individual checklist items of just some of the big things to remember as you go through those different components, or at the very least, just to remember to pay attention to as you go about it. So if that's something you're interested in, there will be a link below for you to learn more and grab that. Again, completely free resource for you. I think it'll be helpful. But with that said, let's now get back to the video. So now that we've covered that, let's talk about why you probably don't want to use your application database also for analytics and why it's best to separate them. So number one, let's just assume you're putting it on the exact same server, the exact same database itself. You very well could run into some performance issues because now you have the same database engine, not only serving up the website or the application, whatever it is, but it's also going to have to manage the load of these queries coming in for analytics. So maybe you have reporting tools pulling from that. You have developers also pulling from it. And when that happens, happens, you have a really good chance of creating a bottleneck in the performance of your queries. And the real impact of that from a business perspective is the application could come off be running really, really slow. For example, you could have individual developers or a reporting tool trying to read or update a lot of data all at once on the same database, while at the same time, a user using the application is trying to read the same data. Now, another thing that comes up a lot of times when we're talking about application with analytics is the schema design. Some people will say the tables are already there. Why can't I just use those? 
those and those relationships for my data warehouse? Why do I need to reinvent this? I already have a products table, product type table, you know, et cetera. Why do I need to create a dim products table? Why do I need to remodel this? Now, this leads to a separate discussion about the purpose of data modeling. But generally speaking, from an analytics perspective, having a lot of individual tables like that that are highly normalized can become an issue for performance and trying to do a lot of joins, especially if you're using these column based analytics databases, which we just spoke about. If you're just strictly matching the schema design and you now have a ton of different smaller tables, it's going to require a lot of joins to get what you want. And that is not optimized for an analytics database. So the more data you have and all these joins, it just isn't matching the strategy behind why these things exist in the first place. Also, when you decide to go that route, you're really up to the mercy of the application itself to run your analytics. Whereas if you create a separate data model that maybe flattens things out, pre aggregates things, pre joins things, you put yourself in control of that modeling so you can be a little more flexible and not be totally thrown off if something changes in the source system. And another point on this, which I would argue is probably the most important is if you really are going to invest in a data architecture and creating this data pipeline of a data warehouse, you probably aren't going to just have this one application. Typically, you're also going to be including other data sources from a variety of other systems. And so the amount of data is going to scale and you're going to need to be able to handle all of this. And so to me, that's another reason why you'd want to move your analytics to a more columnar, larger data focused database, typically a cloud based version, as opposed to being on a more row based design and particularly away from being on the same database that you are hosting your application on. So to bring this all home here, we now have covered the differences between an application database and really the point and the design that you want to think about for that when it comes to transactions and schema design and updates, scale of data compared to an analytics database that's focused for bigger data is designed for larger aggregations that can scale with more sources and all those other things that you want to do as a data team. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of the differences between these two approaches and can make the best decision for your team or just be more informed as you continue to learn and progress in your career. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.